All right, the purpose of this video is to show you how to join three photos together to make a panorama. First thing you gotta do is open up Bridge and find three images that you took um, basically side by side by side. Uh, the trick to that is just to keep your camera level when you want across. Like, as you can see here, this photo lines up with this one. Like you got that, this truck right here, there's the back of the truck right there. All right, so we just want to get all three of these in one seamless image, one wide photo. So what you want to do first is go up into File, down to Automate, and then hit Photo Merge. And let that load up. Um, it says you want to work on the three images that you already have open. I always do it this way. I always open the three, or however many I'm going to use. At this time, I'm just going to use three. So open those three. Um, I don't attempt to automatically arrange it just takes forever and it gets it wrong. I just do that myself. So you click OK, it loads. Then you come into this nifty little place. You see you got your little thumbnail views up top. I didn't know what to do for a long time, but I figured out, take these and just drag them down. This is the rightmost, I remember, because that plane was over there. This one's the middle one, because that truck, so you get them close and let go and it snaps to and fades it a little bit. And this one goes just about there. Okay, so now, um, you want to keep as layers, keep this checked over here. Um, you can do some different modes, you click perspective, and it does this weird, whoa, what the heck, kind of different, but then you go click this over here, and it doesn't stretch it out so badly. Let me get a preview. That looks kind of crappy, so we're not going to do that, we're just going to do normal. Uh, it looks pretty good, so we'll click OK. Um, wait, make sure this is keep all the as layers. Click OK. So do some more loading, and you got this nifty little thing. Your images are now on one uh, background, I guess you could call it, but they're different um, layers. So now the next thing I like to do is like to select the topmost. That's this this one over here. I'm gonna take our little rectangle select tool. I'm going to select like the first, I don't know, like 50 pixels or whatever of that piece. Right click on it, hit feather. We'll feather it maybe, uh, I do like 44 pixels. Click OK. You need control X to cut or right click. Well, not right click, you hit edit, cut. And that cuts it out, but it only, it, it makes a nice fade with it. You see? So you can like almost barely tell that those are two different images. All right, then we move over to the next one. Make sure we got the middle image selected, which we do. Make sure this is up. We will pick about uh, 50 pixels. Actually, let's take the whole truck this time because we know that the next one is underneath if we fade this out. Actually, it's not quite all the way underneath. Sorry, I guess we can't take the truck, so we'll slide this back over. Uh, make sure you feather it, 44, click OK, Control X, cuts it. It looks kind of goofy, so we'll fix that up with the brush tool in just a second. All right, but first, we see that this image here, the sky is a little bit lighter than this one on this side. We we'll select this image, Control M, brings up the curves tool, which is my favorite. And like I like to do is you click over here, and then it tells you on the uh, curve over here, where that is. All right, so we see that this here is a little bit brighter. So we select that, and I like to use the arrow keys, just go down like, I don't know, half a dozen taps. Uh, something like that looks pretty close, right? Click OK, looks better. This one over here is a little more blue and a little darker, isn't it? So bring the curves up again. This color part right here. So we'll make that just a hair brighter. It is a lot more blue, so we'll switch to blue mode. About that brightness, and the blue is brighter, so we'll bring that down. So I can make a little more red. There's a lot of better ways to do this, obviously, but you know, it's just the way I do it most of the time. We need the green. Okay, we'll go to color balance. Go Control B. Again, I'm using Windows 7 um, and Photoshop CS2. I don't know how different the hotkeys are in different versions and all that. That looks pretty cool, close. Alright, so now we got the problem with this truck over here. 
And look at this thing. It doesn't even... What the heck is that, you know? So we could just move this around. Let's see. Get it so the back wheels are at least lined up. What the heck am I going to do here? Let's see. We'll zoom out a little bit. All right. We'll take and um, actually rotate this image by distorting it, I guess. Bring it down some. A little more. Not too much. Not that. That looks just funny. It's not even straight. Once you get it close, you can actually move the arrows to just nudge the image around a little bit. Looks a little better. I'll try the. Oops. Yes. Apply. Whip out the erase tool. You like? Oh, not that many. Like Fifty pixels. Take care of that thing right there. This looks so crappy. Uh, let's see. Switch back to this tool. This image is just taller or something. Yeah, that looks better. Again, you could spend hours and hours trying to line this up. Doesn't matter so much in some images, but like we'll just get it real close like that. I don't bore you, waste your time or anything. So that looks better. This one looks so seamless. I can barely even see the seam. The plane looks a little funny there, so we'll take the erase tool and uh, just take care of that a little bit. Well, this is erasing to the image underneath it. It takes a little while to get your head around it, but once you do it, it's pretty good. And that truck was actually not even there right there. The truck's over here now. Fix this track up a little bit. There. <coughs> All right. Now, the next step I like to do... Um, once you're happy with that, you hit layer, flatten image. So it takes all the layers, makes them one big layer. Um, I'll have to do one more curve adjustment if I want to change anything. Actually, we're going to make the sky a little bit darker. I'm going to pick this tool, select roughly the sky. We'll take a little bit of the top of this building here. And we're going to feather it. Um, let's do 200, 200 pixels feathered. Switch over to the curves tool, and we'll just drag the middle down a little bit. And that's okay. We'll slide this up and we'll do it again. Make the top of the sky a little darker. Actually, let's feather it a whole full 250. You can't feather more than 250. Which is okay when you're working with pixel or pictures that are not huge. But once you get too big, you want to try and figure out how to use the um, what is this, the quick mask tool or whatever the heck it is. I don't use it that much. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to try and select a box of just the image to cut the, the get rid of all this junk on top. I mean, you could spend hours trying to fill it in, but who has time for that, you know? So we're just going to slide this till we get a nice square. Go down a little bit on this one. All right, we'll click OK. Now, uh, right-click on this, select Inverse. So now it's selected the top and the side and the bottom here. I'm going to control X again. It makes all that just white or whatever their background color is set as, which I had it as white. Now you're going to do image trim. Uh, top left pixel, which is the white one. So it's going to cut all the white off. It's going to cut away the top, bottom, left, and right. Click OK. Look at that. From a distance, you, want to, you can't even tell, but once you get close, you can see this truck, and I made a mistake right there. I must have erased right to the background, but 